if nothing can separate us from his love. We are precious to the Lord. We may be afflicted in every way, but we are not crushed. No. Second Corinthians, is that true? Yes. We could be afflicted in every way, but we are not crushed. We could be perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We could be persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We could be struck down, but I am not destroyed. So that means this is not the end. I can continue moving. I can continue moving. We need to activate our faith. The power of the Spirit that dwells, that lives, that cries in us. Don't be afraid. As I was praying and asking the Lord in his word to give us something to, to go back to that power, to believe that power, the Lord took me to Acts. And it's when Peter and John encounter the beggar at the temple gate called Beautiful. Because a lot of the times Mary Cruz is a beggar. All of us are. Many times that's a reflection of who we are. But we have to also be like Peter, convicted, moved by this explosion of the Holy Spirit. The word says that Peter looked at the beggar. How many times do we just pass by our brothers and sisters without looking at them? We must look to connect with the body of Christ. Peter said to the beggar, look at us. Look. And the powerful words, I have no silver, no silver, I have no gold, but what I have in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. I have no silver, I have no gold, but in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, move, walk, get up, revive, come back to life. There's something beautiful also in this passage that we forget to do in order to activate this power of the Holy Spirit. I haven't looked at you and I haven't given you my hand. Because the word continues and it says, he took him by the right hand, raised him up and immediately his feet were made strong. He jumped up, stood up on his feet, and started to walk around. The man entered into the temple, walking, jumping, and praising God. Hallelujah. And we have forgotten that that's our identity, to walk, to jump, and to praise God. We forget that when we encounter the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and when we hear the words, walk, we are to enter into this life of praise and worship. This is what happened to the beggar. He walked, he jumped, and he praised the Lord. Amen. Bishop said this morning, why are you still in the church? Right? Why are you still a Catholic? And I was sitting there. And I said, don't look at me and don't ask me. So I pretended I was praying and I closed my eyes. <laughs> so I wouldn't have that eye contact with him. But I wrote it down. Why am I still a Catholic? Recently I heard a seminarian speak to his superior. And he said, I will not be abandoning the burning building. That made me cry. That made me cry. Because we have to know what our identity is. And I said to the Lord, why am I still a Catholic? It's because Jesus is alive and Jesus is 
king and he is my king, my Lord. See, a lot of the times there is this evil one. It's like a dog. He can't bite, but he likes to show its teeth. And he likes to growl. But I have a weapon. I have the rosary, I have the Eucharist, I have the sacraments, I have the cross. And this gives me the strength to say, step back Satan, I don't belong to you. I will not be living the burning building because Jesus is alive. And Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. show 
that this is you. That Jesus goes to the bottom of the ocean where it's dark, cold, dangerous, and he doesn't care about that. But he goes there to rescue that one fine pearl. Because, is that picture there? Oh, there, look, that's me there. That's me last week. And you know why I asked them to put it there? Not because I wanted you to see me. No, I didn't even think of putting this here today. But I went to this restaurant and I was just mesmerized by the oysters. And then when I was preparing this, the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, what you're holding is what I'm working on. Shaving, carving, cleaning, sanding, because I want you and everyone to be a fine pearl. Don't be afraid of suffering. Don't be afraid of going into the fiery furnace. We have a purpose. We are called to be saints. I am yours. I am indeed an ordinary Christian that moves in the extraordinary power called Holy Spirit. That is the normal way of living. Anything else is abnormal. But society, the world, wants you to believe that living in the power of the Holy Spirit is weird. It's abnormal. But that is the purpose of the Lord. We need today a direct and divine intervention of the Holy Spirit to help us enter into this maturity of our faith. We are called once again to be bold. So before I finish, I want you to know that this purpose has a beginning point. And the beginning point is Yes, Lord. That's when it starts. A lot of the times we've had an encounter with the Lord, but we have not said our fiat, our yes. We are not called to be good people. We are not called to be part of a prayer group. We are called to be holy and to be saints. That is our goal. And that's why here in this current of grace, we pray along with our friend, Blessed Elena Guerra, to be able to live a perpetual Pentecost. Yes, embracing the cross is not easy, but it's part of your Via Dolorosa, it's part of my Via Dolorosa, where I have to embrace the cross. I like to wrap up, and before we get into prayer, because I want to have about five minutes of prayer with you, the promise about receiving power, there was a word given to us in one of our prayer meetings, and I shared this with the province, uh, with the provincial team, CCRSO, and then I'm going to uh, read what they sent because they also received something and this is the beauty of unity. This is the beauty of the body of Christ. The word given to us was, I am about to send more of my spirit. You will receive an explosion of my graces. Be prepared, be ready. So I wrote that and I sent it to uh, Brian. And then they sent within five minutes, Mary, we have received this word. It is time. Rise up. Rise up in a mighty army of witnesses and go forward. For I am with you. Surrender to me and all will be well. Peace. Peace. Don't be afraid to clap. You're clapping to the Lord. Time is crucial. Time is crucial. We must remain blood in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to ask you to please stand. 
Because the Lord is present. He has been from the moment we started planning. And the Lord tells us in his word, and this is something that I would like you to also do. Go back to loving the word. We just had an interview with Father Comerford. And he said, in the 70s, in the 80s, charismatics were used to carry the Bible everywhere they went. Now, we see charismatics, but we don't see the Bible. We had a second interview with our brother John Grant, and he said something that will remain with me until I go and see the Lord. Because those were words of wisdom. It will be a tragedy if you step away from the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It will be chaotic if we step away from the power of the Holy Spirit. Charismatics not only sing, they not only clap. We are not emotional Christians. We are not into the fire of suffering, into the fire of humiliation, into the fire of sanctification. But today we are going to raise the bar. Today we are going to raise the bar because the image out there is that we are afraid. But the one who calls us is holy. Therefore, I am called also to be holy, to be a saint. we read on the book of Daniel when they enter the blazing fire there are attitudes that we have to do like the beggar he walked, he jammed and he praised God you have to live with a purpose just like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego hallelujah just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the midst of trouble, they trusted the Lord. And they decided that at the sound of the horn, they will not worship the golden statue. But the king became outraged. And he called Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come to my presence because you are disobedient. I'm going to punish you. And here comes Shadrach that knows his purpose. Meshach that knows the Lord that the Lord called him by name. Abednego. And said to the king, check out this response, people of God. O oh, king, we will not present a defense in front of you. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hands, let him deliver us. But if he doesn't, but if it does not happen that way, let it be known to you, King, that we will not serve your God or we will not 
up seven times more, which means we're going to be facing a lot of trials, tribulations. It's okay. There is no problem with that. I really think that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were charismatics because they walked, they jumped, they sang, and they blessed the Lord. Don't be afraid to walk. Don't be afraid to sing. Continue blessing the Lord in the midst of your blazing fire. Because if you keep on going, oh, servant of the Most High, the Lord will say one day, come out of the fiery furnace. Because Jesus is faithful. Fire. Don't be afraid. 
those who can, I'm going to invite you to kneel you, because he's among these.